Welcome to FOH, gentlemen. This week, special little episode. Ken, you've brought a friend. Please. You've got a friend. <laughs> this is what started us. <laughs> Ken brought someone. Surprise. <laughs> that actually oh, hangs out with Ken. Yeah. Oh, I, had to clean out, I had to clean out the bank account. <laughs> Didier Mariotti, who is a chef de car from Champagne Mum. And not only has he brought some fantastic champagne, we're uh, enjoying the Quai d'Orsay Coronas uh, from, I think it's OAG November 11, mm. if I remember correctly. OGA November 11. Oh, see, that's what makes me an absolute you expert. You said OAG, not You OG. got it wrong. Fish up, yeah, fish yeah. Up. <laughs> <laughs> we I'll could have edited that, that out. Too. I'm not going to edit it, I'm going to repeat off. it. So Welcome aboard. Know. Gentlemen, we've already fired up some uh, Quai d'Orsay Coronas, and just to get your initial impressions, Ken, I'm going to start with you. It was the first uh, one I've ever tried of any of them, which uh, it's, it's certainly quite pleasant. It's a bit of a sort of a roasted nut, earthy character coming through. Um, but so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. Sounds like a racehorse. Excellent. Didier, what are your thoughts on the cigar? What flavours or what profile are you getting? Body and and any any essential flavours at this point in time? Um, dry, dry fruit, not nuts, uh, very light. Uh, I like because it's not too powerful. Yeah. Which is very good for to pair with uh, the Blanc de Blanc. Very elegant and not too aggressive for me. I'm not a big cigar smoker, but I enjoy it right now. Key d'Orsay is never meant to be a, a full-bodied cigar. But it, it really has always been just under medium-bodied or just slightly above it. And you've hit it on the head. It's the there's, it's the nuts aspect. There's also a, a slight grassiness to it, just a little element, and, and not in a bad way, but just in, in, in just in, in a beautiful way. Um, Key d'Orsay is something that ages exceptionally well um, over over a 10-year period. I mean, people who buy the 2001 versions of these, which we, were, uh, which we actually reviewed and had on sale a couple of weeks ago from our A Vintage program, just the depth of flavour is, is quite stunning with it. And we're just talking about, uh, we're just doing a little bit of a filming for Spitbucket, but we're just talking about the, the combination of, of champagne and cigars. Mm -hmm. Kent, your thoughts on that first. Well, and Smithy, we should say, Smithy, welcome aboard, Smithy. Down the end here. So, uh, that's sorry, fine. I was running Smith. late. I was doing all the editing, all the recording, and I get snuck in right at the end. It's never the same, Smithy. Not the same without me. We're now at the, almost at the end of the first third midpoint. Let's just do a midpoint review. Your thoughts, Smithy, hasn't changed a great deal. No, it me. hasn't changed. It's, it's moved a touch more on that uh, up from mild, mild to medium. It's got that, uh, I'm getting a dry, grassy, hay flavour to it. Um, slightly underwhelmed, but like you said earlier, these cigars are for ageing and really come alive. I agree. Did you? Still the same for Still me. the same yeah. for you, same characteristics? Yeah, a little bit of milk coffee, um, but yeah, mostly the same. It's, it's a nice, pleasant... Um, it's November 11, gentlemen, and yeah. again, it's something this delicate just needs that time to, to, to bring so can out. Can I ask why you sure. chose this one and not actually a decent cigar for a cent? Because, well, it is made for the French market and I just think it's just made a nice... <laughs> so you can't sell them? <laughs> no, actually, Quai d'Orsay is one of our most popular cigars okay. for ageing. We yeah. have such a, a collector base that when good Quai d'Orsay come out, okay. they're gone. Okay. They're gone. And they're not a highly produced cigar in the world. This is not Monte Cristo. This is not Cohiba. This is not Romeo and Juliet. This is a very small production cigar that comes out of Havana. I'd be surprised if they would make more than 50,000 of these cigars a year. And that's where our videos are so good. We're exposing a cigar that... Not to give ourselves a pat on the back. No, no, but half our clients wouldn't have known what a cigar, what a Quito or say Corona is. It's, uh, I've never would have had one, like uh, you. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I mean, I've seen them around um, at times, but I've never... There's always been something else to smoke that you sort of jump on because more familiar um, or something that... Uh, I mean, these have never sort of stood up and said, hey, you've got to come and try me. They've always sort of been in the background. No, but when you put a it. touch of age on them, those ones we had last month were just superb. It was a revelation. Oh, it, that, it's so deep and yeah, so rich. And, 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 and so for something that is a, yeah, for, a, for a cigar that starts out that mild, mild to medium, you sort of think, how can this age and produce so many great because they, it's the seco that they use here. There's three different types of, mm. of this lijero, which gives you the strength. It's in the filler. Lijero, which gives you the strength. Volado, which gives you the burn. And seco, which gives you the, the creaminess, the coffee, the milk coffee flavor. Mm. It gives you the balance. It's, it's, if, if, if lijero is the skeleton of a cigar, seco is the flesh mm. that, that really brings it all together. And these are seco driven. There's very little lijero on these. That's why they're mild, medium bodied at all. 
But Seco's what ages brilliantly. Ligero doesn't age brilliantly, Seco ages brilliantly. That's why the, the Hoy de Montre, Le Hoy de Dieu, is, is just a beautiful cigar for aging purposes. No, Ten years, it's just a vanilla bean mm. stick. Didier, can you tell us about the champagne? Yeah, so this one is uh, what we call Blanc de Blanc. Yep. So Blanc de Blanc means only Chardonnay in France, uh, because we have three varieties in champagne, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. And the only white skin grapes is the Chardonnay. So Chardonnay, uh, Blanc de Blanc means only white juice and white skin. So, but this is all. This is also a bit different in that it comes from one specific village, Grand Cru village, which is Grand Cru are the best villages in Champagne. So we have only 17 villages, Grand Cru villages in Champagne from the 321 villages. So very specific place, and uh, it's one of the oldest vineyards we own in Champagne because we first bought our vineyard in Cramont in 1882. And in fact, this wine used to have a different name, but you were forced to change, weren't you? So difficult to explain because the name was Cremant de Cramont. So Cremant is a, is a, a sparkling wine, uh, uh, winemaking method in France, which means uh, harsh pressure. And Cramont is the name of the village, so people were confused about, is it Cremant, is it a Cramont, what is... So we decided to move to from Cremant de Cramont to Blanc de Blanc. We'll come back to the end of the last third. What about the second third? Ah, bugger it. In the factory. I'm serious, this massive train set in the factory. And they show you, go through all the cane fields and this and that, and have little models of get people working. And, and it's a toy train set, but it's in a you know, room twice the size of this. Well done, Ken. Oh, Excellent. Sort of, it's an interesting part of uh, Cuba. The train, yeah. <coughs> where is it, the train set in where? In the Havana Club factory. Yeah, I've never seen it. Well, you never bothered, you were always too drunk. <laughs> and welcome back. Uh, <laughs> that comment. Welcome back. We're going to wrap up this cigar because Didier has to go to a wine function this afternoon and Ken's been here too long. Um, so <laughs> let's, let's get rid of him. Yeah, we were talking before off air about uh, it's a morning cigar because I, I mean, I'm getting a tiny little bit of that sort of creamy coffee character and it, it would be a lovely cigar to sit around on a morning like this with a glass of champagne or a nice coffee or something and just enjoy it. It's a perfectly pleasant cigar. Yeah, no, no one will you know, So we've been here for an hour almost smoking the cigar and what cigars do best is bring out great conversation with great friends and you can discuss everything with a cigar and a glass of champagne. It, it's perfect. Mm. Smithy, your Yeah, it's moved to... exactly that. It's moved up to medium. Um, I'm getting that creaminess on the palate. Um, it is the ult you know one of the ultimate morning cigars uh, to sit down and enjoy and uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. Right on. <coughs> Again, like Kenny said, eighty nine ninety. It's you know, it's, uh, but it's, it's got years ahead of it. Did you again? You find it picked up in body slightly? Yeah, a bit more. Yeah. As always, as a lot of French people do, order from us. Um, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for your today. It really has just been a remarkable hour, and um, I wish you uh, fantastic the rest of your stay here in Australia. Thank he you. comes back every year. He's part Australian now. Well, you know he yes. always come up, mate, for a cigar mm. and a good glass of wine at the end of thank a hard day. If you bring it. <laughs> <laughs>